Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Wednesday, I'm a freelance illustrator if you didn't know that already. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over March's workshop worksheets. The focus for this month is composition. So we'll be pulling in everything we learned from January and February, how to construct flowers, the beads, the berries and the leaves and all that, and creating a final composition that can be used um, for greeting cards or for prints, anything you like really. If you don't have a lot of experience drawing, um, I'm pretty confident using what you've learned in February and January, you'll be able to do this. And if you are confident in drawing, then this will just be a nice fun exercise to warm you up for the day. So I'll throw you over the shoulder and go through a couple of them with you. There's a lot here. I'm not going to do all of them. I think there's seven worksheets. Um, so I'll keep it to one of each and show you how we work through them. I will see you in a bit. We're going to start off today using circles. Circles are a really easy composition to start working with because you've already got the constraint there and the flower shapes work really nicely within it because they're following the same kind of shape relationship. So I've given you a composition to work from. I've given you the bones to the layout and I'll give you a really light version here that you can go in and practice again and then you've got your clear one where you can do a whole new thing all your own that you want to make up. So we take what we learned in January which is constructing the flowers And then we do our little flowers in. I'm going to do a simpler version of these. And so you can see how quickly you can build up quite a nice composition, even with quite sketchy flowers that you've not put a lot of time into. taking what we learned last month about the leaves and berries and how we can use them to fill shapes. And hopefully by now, if you've been doing this and practicing, you'll have a collection of flowers that you like to draw that you've kind of worked up designs for yourself with patterns you'll have worked out which patterns you kind of like and what kind of shapes so for me you'll always see me coming back to this berry this kind of flower shape the bell shape the four petals now i'm going to show you this in real time so you can see how quickly you can build up an illustration that hasn't taken ages to construct. I know that's easy to say because I've already done an example piece so I know what I'm doing but the more you do this the more practice you get the faster you get at making little compositions for yourself. Now, because I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing, it's not as even as I would normally like. Like these have been really nicely spaced out. But for the sake of the example, I'm just showing you quickly how fast you can build up a little drawing with these techniques because you've already learned how to draw the flowers. You understand how to fill the space and now we're just putting into practice everything we've learned over the last month or two to fill a constrained shape. 
and then come in all your leaves. You can go in and do whatever you like on your flowers, whatever you like on your leaves. You can really play up with the design. You can do more decorative leaves, decorative flowers. Um, really push yourself to do whatever you like, really. See how quickly we did that? Now I'm not going to show you this one because it's exactly the same layout but I'll show you if I was constructing one from my head I'll do the very basic shapes and then I'll go straight into it with pen. So I like to start off with a line first just showing the flow of the artwork and then I'll draw in my big flowers first. You want to start with your biggest flowers first so you know how much space you've got to fill and what other fillers you want to put in. So I want two little flowers here. Now that really did not take me long to do. It's really rough, but that's what I've managed to do in the space of about four minutes. So what I would then do is I would take this and I would trace it onto the paper I want to draw on properly. So my nicer, thicker paper or my watercolour paper if I wanted to paint it. If you don't have a light box, you can hold it against a window, which is what I used to do. I would put a piece of paper on top and then stand at a window so that the light would shine through and show me the line and then trace it onto the paper. You could paint that up and gift it to someone. You could put it on a card and put like, it's Mother's Day on Sunday, a week on Sunday. Put a little happy Mother's Day. And you'd have that in a card like that or you could have it down here imagine that's not there have your word in there nice easy little card happy birthday so that's just a circle you, you draw a circle get yourself a little compass draw a circle and just practice filling in big flowers first little flowers leaves berries filler so now we're going to do the wreath now, in the example I'm giving you here, this is a constrained wreath, but your other worksheet is a non-constrained wreath where you just draw the flowers around the circle. But in this one, it's constrained because you have the outer circle and the inner circle, and you want to make your flowers fit within it so you get a nice tight ring. But you can use the other example if you want something a bit more freeform, relaxed, gentle that kind of feeling um, and this again is great for cards if you want to put a message in the middle like love you or whatever you like really taking this reef here I've given you the bones I started out by putting the larger flowers in first I wanted it to have like a, a kind of rotational symmetry but not completely symmetrical but it has a very loose symmetry to it um, and the reef breaks up into thirds quite nicely which gives you a nice flow as well 
So we've got the larger flowers here and then the smaller ones and then I've left you the space to put in the filler yourself. You can work out if you want to have more berries or more leaves and fit in the flowers as you go. So again, I just did a very simple flower shape and I'm keeping it within the boundary of the circles. I'm going to whiz through this and I'll speed up the footage but I'll let you know how long it took when I'm done. So I did that really roughly, but I did it really quickly and it was really fast to do because the composition was already there for me. But you have the opportunity as well down here to play with it and see what you want to do yourself. So I think I want to try something down here that's like a quarter, kind of like a quarter rotational symmetry. So I'm going to do the same thing here and then rotate it around each time. So I'm going to go for a big flower and I think I want it to kind of be this shape. So then I'm going to have another big flower here, kind of be that shape and then another big flower here and follow the shape. I'm trying to remember which way the curve goes <laughs> and then the flower here. And it follows that shape, kind of. So I quite like that, um, very loose. So yeah, that's the the quarter rotational-ish symmetry-ish reef that I've got there. Uh, because I'm doing it by hand and by eye, you end up with a more organic um, flow than if I was doing it on like Procreate where I could set the rotational symmetry and just do one quarter and then it would repeat around but I like how each quarter is kind of different in its own way but it still follows the same almost symmetry and your eye just keeps going around it in a nice way so yeah that's wreaths done have a little go have a little practice you might find you enjoy the other sheet more which is the free flow and now we're going to do a square. So again, same as the others, you've got your inspirational piece there, you've got the bones of it, and then you've got a lighter version of the bones and then a space for yourself. So big flowers first, little flowers. With squares, I find working from a corner out gives you a nice shape. But you do end up with this space in the middle. You could add another flower there if you wanted to. So let's say in this one I want to add another flower. A uh, big flower here. I was going to add a smaller flower but then I noticed that I get this weird line. And I didn't want it to be like all the, this small plus shape. So I'm going to do a bigger one. And hopefully that will help break up the, the shape a bit more. In 
shapes with corners do your bigger flower first by adding a little leaf you can fill that shape a bit more and get that square shape and even if you used a smaller flower for example if you went down here and did a small one you could add a bigger leaf you could add several leaves just to fill that space but I tend to put the flowers as close to the corners as I can to try and keep the shape and then I add a leaf just to help it be more organic so it's not as blocky but what you can do is like this flower here you can try and make the petals lead into it more like if you have a um, a flower shape where you like that kind of elongated back bit that can fill that shape instead so you don't have to have a leaf I don't like that as much I like it to be nice and rounded but it depends on the flat the style of the flower you have and what works best for you Now, I don't think I like that I put that flower there anymore. <laughs> That's okay. That's why we do these little sketches to work out what we like in a composition and what we don't. I have come to the conclusion that I do not like a big flower in the middle. I think the reason I won't like it when it's done is because there'll be a load of leaves over here so it'll be too flower heavy um, but that's okay it's okay it can be flower heavy maybe that's the effect you might want to be going for it's not the effect I would like to go for in this particular piece but I had to do it to work out that that was how it was Yeah, do you see the difference? There's a nice flow to this. And even though all the flowers are distributed to the outside of the shape, and there's a lot of leaves in the middle, it feels more balanced to my eye anyway, uh, than this piece, which it feels flower heavy in three quarters of it, with one quarter being mostly just leaves and vines. So that's why these are good exercises. What else can we do in a square? Let's see if we can do that quadrant thing we did with the uh, the reef. So I think I'm going to try for a really loose quadrilateral symmetry. Is that a word? Um, so let's think. We'll do our biggest flowers in the corner we want to fill up that space as best we can and we'll have a flower in the middle yeah flower in the middle and then have it yeah coming out like that maybe close to those lines and then have a little flower here maybe filling and now we're just going to go in and fill in any awkward shapes and spaces we see uh, like so go 
going to be fair as well, actually. And we get a little berry. I quite like that. I might do that one up myself properly. So that's it. That's this month's workshop. I wasn't going to go through all seven sheets because a lot of it would just be me saying the same thing over and over. The main takeaways are when you fill in a shape, do your biggest flowers first, your smaller flowers, and then add your leaves, fillers, and details to fill in any gaps. And if you follow those rules, you're going to get something that's pretty nice, pretty balanced, flows nicely. Um, with squares, start from one corner and flow through. Put your flowers in the corners and use leaves to fill the corners. With circles, anything goes with a circle. Circles are happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you think I've missed anything out, if you have any questions, leave a comment below or send me an email. And if you have found this video useful and if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. That felt really weird to say. It's the first time I've ever said it. <laughs> but yeah, if you're getting something out of this, please like and subscribe. Follow me. So you can join the Facebook group as well, Wednesday Made Kin Folk. And on there you can share your artwork, you can share whatever you're working on and get feedback from the group. I give feedback if anybody would be interested in that. Um, and also, I have a Patreon. Uh, I don't really talk about it very much. But I've launched a Patreon and one of the tiers allows for a monthly live workshop session. So if you pledged for that tier, um, each month I'll be doing a video where I go through a design and you can follow me step by step doing it. I'll give you the download, you can follow along um, and you can ask questions, anything specific you want to know about. Uh, but that's there if you want to join it, you don't have to. It's just there, it's something I'm trying to offer to people. And yes, I will see you next month. Please let me know if you have enjoyed these sheets and this month's workshop. I will see you in April. Bye.